Welcome back to my next playthrough series. This time I will be tackling Star Trek Frontiers. And we're going to be doing the first solo uh, campaign called First Reconnaissance. We are going out into a unexplored uh, sector of space and we are trying to find out what is causing the issue out here. Which of course we know what it is, but we're not going to say. We'll find out as we play the game. Uh, it is basically a reskinning of Mage Knight. And I blame this playthrough 100% on Cat Weasel, who just recently, uh, it is early in 2018, has done a wonderful series, couple series, of Mage Knight. And uh, I left a comment over there and he said, oh, you should go ahead and do it. And uh, so instead, I've decided to do Frontiers, which is basically the same game with some slight variations. Uh, it's slightly easier rules-wise as well, although I'm sure I will screw up eventually. Uh, as I do the playthrough. So we're going to be doing a uh, first reconnaissance and I'm going to be using the Lursa and Bator in the Bird of Prey and it comes with these little microscopic miniatures uh, actually pretty well done and they serve the purpose uh, for the game. I was thinking of using my Star Trek Fleet Captain's Bird of Prey miniature but it's actually quite a bit bigger does and there's serves no real purpose other than it's just a placeholder of where you are on the map. Speaking of the map for first reconnaissance uh, there's a very specific way to set it up, and I have set it up in such a way. There are some things we need to put on the map and things to explain here on the hexagonal map. Uh, and I'm not going to go into a ton of detail. There's a bunch of playthroughs already on this particular game, as well as Mage Knight, which is extremely similar. We're just going to finish up some of the setup stuff here, and then we're just going to get into playing a turn or two for this first opening episode. So the first thing we need to do, off a shuffled stack of... Uh, tokens here, these are Bird of Prey uh, um, Romulan tokens, is we need to place them where we see them out on the map. This is tile one and two, and we're going to be doing them in order for first reconnaissance because as things come up, as we explore the map, uh, it will uncover more and more detail of the game. So it's kind of an introduction to how to play the game. So we're going to take the first one and put it over here on the left, and we get this funky looking thing here. Uh, it will do five hits of damage to us worth four fame when we take it out. It has three shields, but I believe that's hard shields, which means you have to uh, physical. It only takes half damage from physical, but let me double check that before I tell you incorrectly. And the second one is going to go on this bird of prey symbol over here. And we have, oh great, a Romulan Warbird. It will hit us for four. Worth three fame, has three shields, and this, I believe, are disruptors. Again, let me double check it in the book so I'm explaining it correctly. Now, there's some other things out on the map here. There's a research station. There is a, uh, what do we call that? It is an outpost, and we have a shipyard. And we have these handy-dandy cards that come with the game and explain everything to us. And so let's take a look. So the Romulan Warbirds, which we've already placed out on the board, face up. That's how you do it. When revealed, place a Romulan Warbird token on the space. Did it. And it even says face up on the space. The effect says no ship can enter a space that is occupied by a Romulan Warbird. A Romulan Warbird can be provoked into combat by a ship that moves from one space adjacent to another space. And in action, you can challenge a Romulan Warbird from adjacent space as an action. As a reward, uh, when you discard the token, you get plus one reputation. All right, we're going to check out the other cards here in a second. And oh, right the back. reason we broke away there for a second is I wanted to double check the ship uh, stats there. So the first one we looked at with the shields here, uh, and I'm not going to read all the details here. It's a defensive ability. It's basically what I said. Your normal uh, resistance to normal phasers, it means you have to do double the damage with normal phaser attacks in order to defeat it. And that was a three. So we're going to have to do six damage with normal phasers. You can get advanced cards that have um, photon pulse and photon torpedo attacks, which then do normal damage. So that's what that symbol is all about. The other one I misquoted, it is actually antimatter weapons. Uh, if an enemy has an antimatter weapon, it's dangerous. Each point of attack you don't block inflicts double damage during the damage phase. This means that an antimatter weapon of attack three can completely uh, can be completely deflected by shields three, but is none uh, of the. But if none of the damage is deflected, your ship receives six damage during the next phase. So wow, deadly. So those are the two ships that have shown up immediately in our sector of space. But like I said, there's other symbols here. We have outposts, 
we have shipyards research stations. So let's take a quick look at what those are all about. The outpost says recruit. A crew with the outpost icon be, can be recruited here. In the beginning of the game, we're going to look at three basic um, characters that can be recruited. And we're going to do that here right away. And you can repair or heal. You can buy one point of repair or heal for three diplomacy here. And you can do this multiple times. Uh, so you can heal your ship from a damage or you can heal a crew member. So you repair the ship or heal a crew member and subjugate. Uh, which means you can subjugate an outpost during another player's turn. But sure as so, I think you can do it on, at the end of your turn. You can only subjugate an outpost once between each of your each of your turns. There's a dummy player as well, so it be between our player and the dummy player. If you do, you draw two cards, but you gain reputation minus one, which is not good. So that's an outpost. Now, with the outpost at the beginning of the game, we have this huge deck of... These are basic cards, or the silver-backed ones, or gold ones, but we're not going to be using them in this playthrough, uh, because this is just first reconnaissance. So we'll give these a bit of a shuffle, and we're going to be drawing three of them. One of them must have the outpost symbol on them. If it doesn't, we just put them to the bottom, and we draw the next three. So we have Tomaluk, and he has a Romulan star base, so he is valid, but... Uh, our second one, okay, we have a Federation officer. He has the Starbase symbol. He can be recruited, and we'll get into all these details if and when we recruit characters. Uh, and we have uh, Jarok, who can be recruited at a Romulan Starbase and at a Cardassian one, I believe. Uh, and so these will make sense as we play the game. So we'll deal with that later. So these are the three basic characters available uh, for this turn, which is, there's turn one. So first reconnaissance, we're going to have four turns uh, with, or sorry, four rounds of multiple turns <laughs> to find out what's going on in the sector of space. So these are the three guys for the first round that are available for us to recruit. Oh, and I should say in the upper left-hand corner is how much recruitment or influence points you need to recruit them. So six for Tomaluk, four for the Federation officer, seven for Jarok. So we're going to put them over in the offering. And I have the handy dandy staples business card holders. Keep everything in control. All right, so that deals with the outpost. I know this is going to be very long kind of setup episode. We have the research station. Uh, we have one right here. It has a gold uh, symbol next to it. And so the three basic colors in the game are red, blue, and gold. So that's a gold one. And what does research stations have to say? It says, if you end your turn at a research station, you gain one data crystal of the station's color to your inventory. Okay, there are two things in the game. There's crystals, which can be stored from turn to turn and round to round. And there are tokens, which must be used on your current turn. You lose them at the end of your turn. Again, should hopefully make sense as we play the game and I don't screw up too much. <laughs> we also have something called a dry dock and there's two of them here on the board right now. Uh, and it's maintenance. If you end your turn on a dry dock, you can remove one damage card from your hand or discard pile. This is not the same as a repair action and the effect cannot be combined with repair actions. So remember with a repair action, if we're on an outpost, we can perform a repair action for three influence, we can heal one or we can repair the ship for one but if you stop at a dry dock um, that is not the same as a repair and data transfer if you start your turn at a dry dock you gain one white data token now the white in the game is a wild card it can be used for any of the three basic colors all right so that deals with <laughs> i know a ton of information uh, that deals with um out with uh, research stations and that covers off everything basically on the basic board. And how you play First Reconnaissance is they try to walk you through the game so you don't have to look up every rule immediately. Uh, so we're going to go over now to the sort of main board, which or the main tracking board for points, fame points, and influence. And then we're going to uh, get into that for setup. I guess this episode is going to be set up because <laughs> there's so much going on. We're not going to be able, probably, to have a turn, unfortunately. I apologize, but hopefully this will give you an idea of at least the setup. We have these tokens here. This is when we level up. We're going to take two of these, and we're going to pick one of them. And this card explains 
all of the 10 tokens that come. And like I said, we're playing with Lursa Bator and the Bird of Prey. And there are 16 cards in the deck, which are the same between all the four ships that come in the base game, and one specific to the captain. In this case, captains, Lursa Bator, of the ship you are playing. All right, let's go over to the Fame and Influence board, and we'll talk about the dummy player a little bit. Uh, and we have to roll up the data dice, and then we have to figure out who's going to be going first uh, in this round. Okay, this is a bit of a long shot. I'm not going to zoom in too much because I can kind of explain everything from here. So I've set the dummy player here, uh, and I'll explain the dummy player here in a second. This is the sort of little data data core. Uh, we're going to be using three dice. So for each game, you use two dice plus one per player. So we're playing a solo game. We're going to be using three dice. I'm just using a six-sided die to keep track of the rounds. So we're going to be, of course, round one. This tells you what it costs to move through things uh, and where you can end. So asteroids you cannot move into or through at all. Same with uh this is the black hole you cannot move into or through at all suns you can move through them at a movement cost of four but you cannot end your movement there if you do i believe you take damage and get bounced back one space planets you can also uh move through them it costs three to move into them but i don't think you can uh end your space on a movement wiser an x there i can't remember i think you can end your movement on a planet uh, but it costs three to move onto the planet or through the planet. Uh, nebulas cost three to move through, and just regular space costs two movement points to move through. I'll make this, uh, clarify this completely as we do the playthrough and start doing movement and stuff, so I'll explain that a little bit more. Now, for setup, we do need to roll these three dice, and they have to have, uh, at least two of these dice have to have the basic colors, which is red, uh, blue and gold. If they don't, we reroll the ones that don't and keep going. So let's see what we get. So we start off with two yellow and one wild card, and that's valid. We can do that. So uh, if we had set had two wild cards and a yellow, we'd keep the yellow, reroll the two wild until we have a majority of dice showing basic colors. So we're set up here, good to go. Next thing we have to do is figure out. Uh, I know I'm going over this 100 miles an hour, but <laughs> it's a lot to this game. Uh, oh, okay, I'll just explain this. So this is our influence track here. We're starting at zero. Uh, as we go more positive on the track, we're going to get plus numbers here. So plus one, plus two, plus three, plus five. That helps us in influence for recruiting crew members, which we've looked at already. If, of course, you go negative, uh, negative one, negative two, three, all the way to X, this is a negative influence for trying to recruit crew members, all the way to X, which means nobody wants to work with you ever, uh, which in Lursa and Bator's case could be quite possible. This is our fame tracker. This is how we're going to level up in the game. So as we get fame, we're going to go like one, two, three, four, five. We keep going, keep going, keep going. And as we jump to the next level, uh, this is our level up reward. So again, I'll explain that as we go. So right now we have a token for the dummy player, which we're using the USS Defiant by Cisco. Not going to actually participate in the game. It's a timer, more or less. And this is Osler Sebator in the Bird of Prey. All right. Huh. Lots of talking. How the dummy player works. Uh, each card has a couple of tokens on it. This is a red and a yellow. So we put a red crystal and a yellow crystal on the card. Every turn, we're going to flip three cards, and if the third card is either red or yellow, then we're going to add one extra card. So it, it's how the game is timed. When there's ever no cards to flip over, the dummy player will do what is called uh, declare end of round, which means we will have one more turn to play, and then it's going to be the end of a round, and we're going to go into the next round. We only have four rounds, because we're playing solo, uh, to find out what's going on in the sector of space. So that's really the mission in the game. All right, so how do we decide who goes first? Well, we have these funky cards. We have, then they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we, because it's solo, get to choose which card we like. Everybody chooses card number five. When you take this tactic, immediately draw two cards. It's a good one to take, and I think we are going to do it. I won't go through the details on the rest of them. Uh, so what happens is we take card number five, and that's the order 
The other ones then are just going to be shuffled and the dummy player is going to get one of them and they're not going to do any of the text on it. Doesn't going to, it's not going to apply, but the number, so they actually choose six, which is awesome. Now these two, number six and number five, are going to go away. Uh, they will not be able to be chosen uh, in the next round, but we will be able to choose from one to four. So we are going to get two extra cards to start the, our game with. All right, so these four, I uh, might as well, oh, they're back in order anyway. I'm just going to put them back over here, keep things organized. All right, so we take the little tokens here. We are going to be going first, so I'm going to put our token here first. And then the dummy player is going to go second. Uh, let's go back now over to Lursa Bay Tours area and the, and the map area. And we will draw up our hand for uh, the beginning of play, but we will not actually have an episode of play until the next time. And I must say too that this series is going to come out sporadically. I don't have a ton of time to come up with an episode every day until we finish it. Uh, but that will give me a chance to fix errors and listen to suggestions and comments along the way. A couple other things to note here. We have something called, um, this is advanced. These are not advanced. These are, um, oh my God, I forget what they're called. They're like the super cards <laughs> that we can find in the game. Kind of like relics, I guess, from, uh, or spells from Mage Knight. Uh, they kind of combined it all into the super deck. We don't actually look at that yet until the game tells us to during first reconnaissance because we're trying to just learn the game and not get flooded with everything at once we also have advanced action cards which are these with little pluses in them these are souped up abilities of the basic cards likewise we're not going to be looking at them yet until we're told to by the first reconnaissance playthrough because they don't want to overwhelm you okay oh let's go back now to lursa bay Tours area and let's get set up for the first turn uh, and then that's going to be the end of the episode so let's go back we're going to drop our cards and remember we picked number five so we get to draw two extra cards all right let's go back and pick up our cards for the first turn of round one all right yes there's so much to cover in this game uh it would take me probably an hour to go over every detail so that's why i'm going over things quickly we do have one command token right now at level one, which means we can recruit one crew member, which is above and beyond just the regular contingent of Klingons, I guess, in our Lursa Bator Bird of Prey. All right, we have a deck here basically of 17 cards. Uh, I've shuffled them, but for the interests of, no, I haven't cooked the deck, we'll do a little bit more sort of shuffling here. Um, and that will be that. So we're gonna be drawing, we would, we have, have here a hand size of five, for levels one to two and a defense of two. We would normally be drawing five cards, have five cards in our hand, but because we took number five, we're gonna be drawing seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna start off with seven cards. So this is our draw deck. This of course will be our hand. We're gonna have a discard pile. We're gonna have cards we're playing. So let's take a look at the cards we have quickly. Uh, so we have battle stations and it gives us attack or shields too. If we power it with a gold mana, or sorry, gold, I guess it's gold, I'm calling it yellow. Gold mana, we get attack four. We can only use one of the dice from the data core per turn, unless we have cards that say otherwise. So we have battle stations. We have intimidate, which gives us diplomacy too. If we power it with red mana or red data, then we get diplomacy five. At the end of your turn, you lose one reputation. Uh, we have power to the shields attack or shields two or shields five powered with red we have move two that's good we want to move in this game long range attack three powered by red uh, we have insight which is this kind of a buff card you may use one additional data die from the core this turn very cool ability we can use two of them or if you power with blue take a data crystal or take a data die from the data core and set it to any color except white gain two data tokens of that color. Again, tokens must be used on your turn. Do not re-roll the data die when you turn to the core. So, cool. We have another move two. Power it with blue, we get move four. We have improvise. Uh, discard another card from your hand to gain move three, diplomacy three, attack three, or shield three. If you power it with the purple, uh, which I forget what it's called. I'm sorry, there's so much in this game. Uh, my brain is probably gonna melt as I do it, but hey, we'll give her a shot. <laughs> Discard another card from your hand to gain move five, diplomacy five, attack five, or shields five. 
and we're back to battle station so these are our seven starting cards for lursa and Bator, and i'm going to leave it off there uh, because i've covered off a ton so basically what we do for our first turn which we're going to come back and do in the next episode is we're going to take our bird of prey and it's going to appear in the wormhole space which is right here and from here we will begin our journey into the unknown space one other thing I should mention is uh, we have to explore in a conical shape, which means we have to go up. This this is kind of like a hard border on this side, hard border on that side. You can't, for instance, put another um, hexagon token down here because this is considered uh, the borders of space. We're going to be going out this way in a cone, just so you know. Uh, there's asteroid fields here, here, and here, which means we cannot go into them. There's partial little asteroid fields here and here, which are considered clear space. And that's going to be it for our introduction today. When we come back, we're going to be taking our first turn. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your subscriptions, comments, and likes. This is Star Trek Frontiers. We have Lursa Bator. We're heading out into deep space.